hockey fans, are you ready to brave the wild? With me, your host, Paladino Joey, or Joey Awajan. Brave the Wild is available on all your favorite podcasting apps, along with the Hockey Podcast Network. We thank Dylan and Kyle out of British Columbia, Vancouver, British Columbia, anyway, for having us on board. Uh, thank you once and always for downloading and listening to the show. It is a great pleasure to be back on board again with you once again today. The sun is shining. I'm kind of hot, believe it or not, on a cold day, but that's how it is. The Minnesota Wild continue to play reasonably good hockey, except the Boston game, depending on how you feel about the offside calls, but I guess that's how it goes. The Wild uh, meatloaf this past week, they go 2-1 and one with a great feeling there, I guess, continuing. The, the point streak ended versus Boston, but the Wild kind of sort of pick up where they left off after that. But joining me today... Should we call it the Crease and Assist podcast? The Crease podcast? Derek Felska, as I call him, the legend, is back on board. Brave the Wild once again. Uh, <laughs> the legend. I, I don't know. <laughs> I, I don't get called many compliments all that often, but I appreciate it. Uh, probably the Crease and Assist podcast. That's just what my thing is now. Mm-hmm. Um, but otherwise, you know, like I said, we as we try to say, and I know you've, you've corrected uh, something, but like like I said, if you want to talk to us, it's hashtag crease podcast, C R E A S E podcast. Uh, if you have any questions or whatever, but no, I really appreciate it. Uh, first of all, before I say anything else, thank you so much for all your help and support um, with getting kind of our podcast off the ground. Uh, you know, little technical hints there make life a lot better. My my wife uh, definitely appreciated your your help to get things going on for us so i can't thank you enough for that joey yeah 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 you're welcome it's and it's one of those things you always think like say someone that's been doing it a while you think oh it's it's not the it's not that big of a deal you just press this press that and then it's like wait a minute and wait a minute that was me before where i was like what the blankety blank do i do this is driving me nuts so Mm -hmm. i apologize sometimes i forget how routine it gets after a while but yeah no it was my pleasure to help and hopefully i wasn't Hopefully, I didn't try to make it sound like it's super easy when it's not necessarily as easy as it looks. I mean, even I struggled a little bit today with uh, whenever I whenever I do a duo show, like or you know, like have a guest on, it's it's not as easy <laughs> it's not as easy as doing a solo show because obviously you have to get the recorder going, you have to connect the audio, blah blah blah, and pray to God everything works too. <laughs> no doubt, and you know, one thing I guess you become very uh, sensitive to at times is. Uh, versions of programs too like suddenly they'll they'll change to an updated version and then they move things oh, and yeah. suddenly uh. where you feel like you're comfortable all of a sudden you're like well where's that button that was really important now it's not there yeah and you find out it's been you know they're using a different function to do the same thing and yeah. um <laughs> there's always that fun uh you know random you know like uh, learning curve i guess you always have yeah, it drives me nuts. It's like you were. T- it's like say, imagine you've been tying your shoe with your right hand your whole life. Well, guess what? You get to tie it with the left now. You know, it's yeah, like, like oh, come on. <laughs> well, or if you like break your hand or something, and suddenly <sighs> you have to, everything changes, right? And you yeah. suddenly, uh, you you realize you took, you know, your functionality very uh, very much for granted. Mm-hmm. It is. <laughs> it's a headache those updates sometimes. Hopefully they don't do it too often. But yeah, like as. Uh, as we were hinting at, of course, in case you've been in a cave, uh, Derek Felska, of course, did write uh, a blog for a, the longest time, uh, Crease and Assist. Uh, back in the day, it was State of Hockey, and then eventually it was changed to Crease and Assist. There's a fun story behind that. But also, again, um, just recently joined the dark side of the force and became a uh, became a podcaster. Podcast. Yep. So, yep, welcome aboard. It's It's been, I think you guys do an awesome job. I, I really do. Well, thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. And uh, I don't really think of it as a dark side. I just think that uh, (laughs) it's actually been kind of liberating, to be perfectly honest. Uh, Writing is a grind at times, and Mm -hmm. that podcasting couldn't be. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, but at the same time, I guess I feel like like there's places for content, and I think in some ways maybe people are more approachable to be reached – you know, through something that they're listening to if they're working out, walking, commuting, or whatever, uh, as much as they would be to look down and scroll through an article. So mm-hmm. it's a different it's a different thing, but it's also fun, and I'm enjoying it so far. So 
should probably get into the wild. <laughs> yeah, yep, 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 absolutely, yep. And I was, and I was just, and I could say real quick, that's the charm of podcasting is to be able to have it on the go anywhere, where you're even mowing lawns or whatever. So, because yep. as long as you have the right ear protection. <laughs> but yes, getting yep. in the wild. I'm sorry, <laughs> but uh, fun introduction. Uh, Matt Boldy, Matt Boldy, of course, upon. Kirill Kaprizov's injury that stunned us, obviously, in a big way. Uh, it was three to four weeks. Now we're down to one to two, God willing. Um, knock on wood and all that. Uh, Matt Boldy, of all people, and the one we probably hoped the most, would step up, and he majorly has. Uh, he had a hat trick versus Washington this past week, the game winning goal in New Jersey. Uh, had a goal taken away against Boston because of, you know, like multiple <laughs> offsides. Uh, multiple offsides, yep. <laughs> calls which were like I, I i read his lips he said the blank come on it was funny <laughs> but he has been i've been very impressed with matt Boldy. we're seeing a different player haven't we yeah and i think a lot of that is out of necessity i mean yeah. sometimes you know like we were saying before like you know functionality when suddenly something is gone then you have to adjust and you realize how things are different sometimes you develop strengths that you maybe didn't realize you were over there like you know, for so long, Kirill Kaprizov has been kind of this team's easy button where, mm-hmm. you know, if you needed a goal, you put it on his shoulders and he'll find a way to get to get it done. But now with him out, without him being there, everyone's kind of forced to look around and say, OK, who's going to step up and get the goals now? Because your easy button's no longer there. And 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 Boldy's exactly the player that you wanted to see kind of raise his game. And, uh, you know, I think. I think there also has to be a lot of credit given to Marcus Johansson because I yes, think those yes. two have really, mm-hmm. you know, as, as much as, as Boldy helped Kevin Fiala last year, you know, mm-hmm. really kind of blossom into the player that he became, I, I really think Marcus Johansson's helping Matt Boldy do the same thing. And, uh, you know, I, I think even though, you know, Marcus Johansson, at least from a, from a scoring sense, I mean, he's been good. Um, and hasn't had as many points, of course, as Boldy has. No. <laughs> but I don't think you get those points without Johansson in a lot of cases. So he, yeah. I think he deserves a lot of credit too. Not, I mean, not saying that Boldy doesn't deserve credit. I'm just saying mm-hmm. that it didn't just magically happen all by itself either. Yeah, Johansson, the, the chemistry has been outstanding between the two, and it's something that was certainly lost last summer when uh, we, of course, unsurprisingly lost uh, Kevin Fiala to free agency. Um, ironic how I always mention this. It's rip, I know I'm repeating myself from over and over and over, but oh, it's just funny how it all turns out. How Kevin Fiala wanted the seven million, um, you know, like the year before, the year before he became a free agent, and of course it didn't happen. And then Boldy winds up with the seven million. So, but yeah, yeah, it, it's nice was, though. I'll mm-hmm. oh, go ahead. Yep. No, but that was the choice the team made. Yeah, the, the team, the yep. team, the team chose to invest in his 21 year old versus a 24 year old and Mm -hmm. and that was what they decided you know that was their decision you know Mm -hmm. they couldn't afford both so they had to make a choice and that was the choice they made but you know just kind of tagging one last thing to to johansson is he just like like fiala he brings speed and he brings skill and Mm -hmm. that that those are the things that i think we've seen in boldy for boldy that helps him enhance his game if if he's with players that are either his speed or slower, then that makes it harder for him. I think I think having a faster player helps open up the ice a little bit for him and gives him some opportunities to attack the net a little bit more as teams have to be a little more conscious of the speed on that line and 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 you're right, it's been it's been fun to see. I'm sure Boldy's enjoying himself a lot more than he was a couple weeks ago when he probably felt like he couldn't find the net to save his life. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it's really been, you know, it's been super important <coughs> in terms of, uh, for the wild to keep pace and try to continue to hold serve against Colorado, who continues to charge after mm-hmm. us. Mm-hmm. Watch out, right? Oh, boy. Obviously, in the mirror are closer than they appear. Yep. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yep. it's one of those unexpected, you know, things where a lot of us, when we first saw Marcus Johansson again, oh, no, but then... It's like, wait a minute, let's let's see what happens. Boldy certainly has needed a chemistry with a skilled player, maybe, and it certainly has turned out to be a very nice story so far. Mm-hmm. Well, we'll see how far it carries us. So, 
Oh no! <laughs> I clicked on the wrong thing. Don't you love that, um, Ryan Reeves? Yeah, I I love this guy's personality. Uh, it's it's funny too. It's like I always kind of liked him, kind of sort of like Vegas, mm-hmm. see, uh, St. Louis, all that kind of sort of. He always kind of had a smile on his face. Um, kind of. I always wondered if it's just kind of that cocky sneer, but I don't. But but it's mm-hmm. it's more of a fun thing. Um, He's he's definitely stepped up big time, and I like how he jokes around about how well hey, if Kaprizov's out and we really need scoring, I guess that falls on me. I just love yep. that. I love that. Um, yeah, we're seeing more of his personality. He's actually scoring some goals, and I've enjoyed it. Yeah, they've had a that that fourth line has been honestly in many cases either our best line or even our second best line in a lot of games. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, it it's it. It may look like it's a bit of a misfit line in the fact that you have two smaller, faster guys in Mason Shaw and Connor Dewar mm-hmm. combined with a slower, more physical guy like like Ryan Reeves. But it works because all three of those guys hit. And, you know, if the if Mason Shaw and Connor Dewar are the ones that are going to be the first of the corner to get that hit, you know, if they miss, then usually Ryan Reeves is coming to, to clean something up. And mm-hmm. and that's a and that's a freight train, and you can see the effect that he has on the ice, uh, whether people want to admit it or not. Where defensemen don't want to go in the corners, uh, where defensemen are looking over their shoulder because they are worried that he's gonna, you know, deliver a big blow. And he's, you know, he's six two, almost two thirty. That's that's a big that's a big body coming in to hit you. And um, you know, I think the thing that I think maybe we didn't you know a lot of wild fans myself included probably didn't appreciate is you know you know enforcers kind of get this you know image or at least this belief that they're just kind of like knuckles that have skates yeah and that they don't have a lot of they don't have a lot of you know a lot of like forethought in the things that they do he's actually really really smart Mm, and he really he really he really picks his spots at the right time and I would definitely say probably experience has given him that knowledge you know he knows when's the time that he needs to step up and when he doesn't um, and you know he only has 24 penalty minutes so we're not talking mm-hmm. about a person that's playing recklessly um, or you know trying to start something physically when you don't need somebody to start something physically a la kind of like a Brandon Duhame sometimes. I think he yeah. almost feels like he has to stir something up when you're like, no. <laughs> yeah. You don't ha- you don't have to try to show somebody you're tough at this moment. This isn't the time for that. Mm-hmm. And then he finds himself in the box and, you know, those are usually seemingly the times when we get hurt. Or yeah. same thing with Ryan yeah. Hartman sometimes to an extent. But he picks his spots well and he's definitely, a, you know, he seems like he fits really well with the locker room. And, um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what they do in the postseason, um, whether they want to keep him around as, you know, not as much as a deterrent, as much as it is maybe like psychological warfare that, you know, that, you know, so far Dean Evison has deployed the fourth line on a regular shift. It's not like he, you know, they're, they're bolted to the bench and they only play like, you know, five minutes a game like a typical enforcer used to be. They're getting a regular shift more often than not, and he's even putting them in situations where it's like late in the game where you're normally maybe a fourth line wouldn't be out there, but he's putting them out there because he trusts them to do their job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they, they don't make mistakes. They they really don't. It's because, I mean, obviously a lot of enforcers or some of them, they're reckless, like you said. They make, you know, make mm-hmm. mistakes. Dumb penalties. Who was that guy named White that we traded for? I forgot his first name. Oh, that, that Ryan stupid... White. Ryan, Ryan White. Yeah. White. Oh, <laughs> we could just go on all day about that. Just that's why well, eventually he was scratched forever. <laughs> well, the thing is, is for an enforcer though, or even a tougher player, they kind of feel like that's what they're expected to do. Mm-hmm. And so it really is a fine line. Like, okay, you know, they they didn't bring me here to score goals. They brought me here to. You know, <laughs> either well, either mix it up or, or to be kind of a, you know, kind of be like a rampaging player that sits there and you know delivers a lot of hits. Well, there's times to do that, and there's also times when you have to be careful. Like, okay, we're going in the corners. He's got his back to me. 
You know the you know the official is gonna is is waiting to see you hit him in the back for a cross check. So you got to learn to ease up. You can't always try to crush somebody in the boards just because you can, because you know you're not gonna get the benefit of the doubt. Yeah. Um, yep. <laughs> and 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 Ryan Reeves seems to be that player. Like he understands, you know, to deliver the hit when he has it, but he's also smart enough not to make that hit when he doesn't. <laughs> mm-hmm. So he, he he's not putting the team in. In, in situations that put them put the team at a you know a disadvantage or puts the team in a tough spot and you know that that's another place where I think that um, I think we've learned to appreciate that you know he he plays <clears throat> he plays smart and he plays within the rules mm-hmm. and that train that train is the sound of Ryan Reeves coming yes. for you right now yep yep <laughs> I was about to say it there's Ryan Reeves he's coming he's coming and <laughs> and he's and he's not gonna get penalty minutes either like you were saying yeah like 24 that's Definitely, you know, yeah, the the high IQ is a huge, huge difference maker. In the past, he had, yeah, he had like huge penalty minutes like with St. Louis and all that, but it seems like pretty much from the Golden Knights on, he's definitely kind of like become more reserved. Pretty cool, yep. And, hmm, career high of points was 20 with the 19 yeah. team, yeah. <laughs> I remember that. I mean, he led that team in scoring for a while that year. I remember that. Yeah. It was funny. But I th- but I think for like an enforcer, though, a lot of enforcers, you see that kind of curve where early on they have a lot of penalty minutes because you're trying to prove yourself. You're, yeah, and especially yeah. earlier on too, that was when there were more enforce. No, that was fine. Uh, especially early on, that's when there were more enforcers in the league too. So there were more fights happening. So your penalty minutes are likely to kind of climb because you're dropping the gloves a lot more now with not many around. Mm-hmm. Unless they want, unless they really want to fight. Ryan Reeves and risk getting yeah. wrecked. Uh, yeah. A lot are like, I'll, I'll, I'll chirp at you and I'll, I'll leave it at that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we have <laughs> I, li- them. I, I like my orbital bone where it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's a diff- that's a difference maker for sure. Yeah. yeah, and Ryan Reeves has been that a difference maker, no doubt. Uh, mm-hmm. The Gus bus definitely got slowed a bit. That was kind of like this train screeching and making all kinds of noise. But mm-hmm. dang, that thing is big. Talk, <laughs> it's yeah. a big one. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the Gus bus slowed a little bit the last couple. You know, last couple games until a strong performance versus New Jersey. Uh, if it's up to me, if I'm Dean Evison, I still want him to be my game one starter in the postseason. What's what say you? Well, it's interesting you bring that up because uh, mm-hmm. I don't know. I did kind of a poll on that. Oh yeah. Um, oh, that's so, right. Yeah, yeah. Good, good timing. Yeah. Give me a second here. Uh, yep. So I did a poll, basically asking, there you know, at is. this point, who would be the the starter for um, game one of the playoffs, assuming we make it. And uh, I think, do you have the poll up? Yes, yep. It's like, who should be the hashtag Minnesota Wild starter going into the playoffs, assuming they make it, knock on wood. Yep. <laughs> so, and, so, so if you see the choices on there, so I have, mm-hmm, I, think I, have yep. Philip, I think I have Marc-Andre Fleury. Yes, yep. Philip Gustafson, um, whoever is playing better at the moment, and then... Yes, for Wallstead. <laughs> just, yeah, yes for Wallstead, just for, just for fun, because I figured, you know, if someone's one of those prospect people that thinks we should call up all of our prospects all the time as soon as possible. <laughs> um, and as you can see, it's kind of mixed. Uh, the most common choice is who's ever is playing better at the time, which is a very judicial way to put it. Mm-hmm. Um, then next most pretty clearly is Philip Gustafson. Yeah, it looks like according and, to – oh, go ahead. I, I was going to say, according to this one, uh, Philip Gustafson won. Oh, wait, or it? is winning. I guess it says two days wait. left. Yeah, there's still time to vote if you want to. Maybe I'll refresh. If you disagree. It. Yeah. I wonder if this updates automatically. I'll just refresh just in case. Just it in case. It should? Yeah, yeah, it did. Yep. Gustafson is winning the election at uh, 45.3. Whoever's playing better is 37.5. Mark Andre Fleury, 15.6. And Jesper Volstedt, the. Character in Secret of Evermore. No, I'm kidding. One point six. I yes, I did that. Yep. One point six percent. And and Gustafson was in Secret of Evermore also. <laughs> no. That's right. Yep. I, yep. I had fun with that. That was your hero and your dog. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Secret of Evermore just came out. Video game flashback. So. 
<laughs> we're both uh, retro game fans, so Secret of Evermore video game flashback. A little, little uh, free plug, I guess, or shameless plug. That's what we call it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, if you look at the, if you look at the team, like, I don't know, just looking at, it, I did some a uh, little bit of research this morning, and uh, there is definitely a difference between uh, the play of Gustafson overall and, and Flurry and. Mm. And, and to me, there's in two different places. So the first is even strength save percentage. Mm. Philip Gustafson is a, has a 934 even strength save percentage. That's Ooh. that's that's 11th best in the NHL. Mm-hmm. And uh, Mark Andre Fleury is 918 mm. uh, save percentage at even strength, which is 41st in the mm. NHL. Yeah, that's um, a backup. Yeah. And then you look at the other one, which is even more telling I guess for myself mind you I should say this I did the same thing last year with Cam Talbot and Mark andre Fleury and we all know who got the starts <laughs> yep yeah yep. Um, but anyways um, I'm just throwing that out there for <coughs> context so if you look at on the power play when the other team's on the power play Philip Gustafson save percentage is 908 which is again 11th best in the NHL hmm um, and by the way, this is for all goaltenders, so there isn't like any sort of threshold of starts here. Mm-hmm. So you could you could have a few, you know, I I didn't I don't ha- I didn't, wasn't able to find like a way to filter it by this um, amount of starts. So there could be some people in there that you know they did this like one time, so they had like a thousand yeah. save percentage, and oh look, they're fantastic, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, whereas jump. Both, <laughs> yeah, where, whereas like most a lot of times you. You filter by saying, "Okay, goalies with at least 30 starts." Mm-hmm. With both with both uh, Flurry and Gustafson have had this year. So, anyways, yes. yep. going to going back to Flurry on the when the other teams on the power play compared to Philip Gustafson's 908, which again is 11th best in the league. Um, Mark Andre Flurry is an 857 oh. save percentage, which is 56 <laughs> in the NHL, which doesn't mean that he's horrible. Mm-hmm. But definitely, that's that's a half that's a half a goal. Yeah. And yep. you know how many games come down to you know not necessarily a half goal. You don't have like a half goal loss, but you know that that's that's a significant difference. We're not talking about like you know just one tenth or one one hundredth. You know it's it's almost a full point, um, or at least over a, almost over half a point. So that, that's a significant difference between those two, and that's something that, uh, um, you know, to me is is not a trivial thing to discuss. But, you know, while I think the fans and I think um, we, or many, at least people that voted in the poll, would be fine probably seeing Gustafson there, I think we all know that this team has definitely shown – a leaning towards veteran players and players that have, have experience, and that was always the thing. Like with 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 Flurry last year, you know, even though Cam Talbot at least statistically looked like he was playing better, it didn't matter. It was Flurry's net until Dean Evison said it wasn't. You know, and mm-hmm. the question is: is will they go through that again, or will they say, "Okay, Gustafson, you're the guy." Because Gustafson is getting some of the starts against the better teams. You know, he is the one that played against New Jersey, and New Jersey is a decent team. You know, it's not like he's yeah, only getting... Yeah. You know, I mean, I realize he didn't play very... Well, mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like he's just playing the weaker of the opponents anymore. It seems like he's getting more of the chances against the, the, the more quality... You know, if they have a back-to-back, it's Gustafson that's getting the, the tough start. And... And Flurry's getting not necessarily a softball or a cupcake, but he's getting the lesser of the two teams. Yep. Yeah, this you is. You know? Mm hmm. I mean, they're still getting both used, which is good, because let's face it, I mean, Gustafson has has made it so that Flurry has not had to start, like, every game, mm-hmm. which, which was a concern going into it. You know, going into the season, we wondered if. Gustafson was going to be able to spell flurry enough just to keep him rested to say nothing of Gustafson playing as well as he has. Um, but I think the statistics bear out pretty significantly that, you know, Gustafson is playing better. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, again, 
is is that more important or are you going to value that that previous playoff experience more and so it kind of feels like uh you know as a uh, yogi bear would say it's <laughs> it's it's deja vu all over again <laughs> you know you know we're, we're we're back with that same thing now I, I don't think we're going to chase away Philip Gustafson after this season like we kind of chased away Cam DeHelvet. Yeah. But at the same time, I also think that uh, it's probably going to feel like that debate's happening all over again. Mm-hmm. And I, I certainly hope not. And it is such a big deal to have uh, two, two competent goaltenders in this day and age uh, because mm-hmm. we've seen it happen, like I say, deja vu all over again with Backstrom mm-hmm. and... Uh, Dubnik, obviously, I've brought it up like in the past quite a bit. It, how they'd be like, wow, this guy's the best player. You know, he's the best goalie in the league or top five. And then here comes February. Oh, he's still good, I guess. And here comes March. What's going on? And here comes April. Well, see you next year. You know? Yeah. And because well, it's, yeah, they, they, it's just, you just overuse them. Yeah. Well, I mean, Wild fans have even seen that workout in the playoffs, too. I mean, 2003, oh, yeah. you yeah, know, the, the two goals, Manny, yeah. Fernan- Manny Fernandez and Dwayne Rollison. Yep. You know, yeah. when it when it when it wasn't working for Dwayne Rollison, thank God for Manny Fernandez. And then when it wasn't working for Fernandez, thank God for Dwayne Rollison. Yeah. See? Um, and they yep. they both each delivered a series to the Minnesota Wild in its longest <laughs> run it's ever had. Mm-hmm. So there there's definitely. Um, a want, or I think there's a, a, a good reason to want to have two decent options. I, I think overall we're playing much better defensively than yes, we did a sure. season ago, mm-hmm. um, which you hope that bodes well, at least for a playoff run, especially if, knock on wood, um, right. you know, this this expanded offense, if that's what you want to call it, with the fact that, you know, more people are scoring as opposed to just one player basically carrying all of it on his shoulders. Mm-hmm. Hopefully that continues when <laughs> Kaprizov returns. And, and on the other end of it, too, sorry for backtracking, but yep. <clears throat> hopefully this also allows Kaprizov, even though I know people have talked about whether he has, like, an accelerated comeback time because of his tremendous health or physical, what do you want to call it, his stamina or whatever it might be, his healing ability. Mm-hmm. Um, which sounds like something out of Secret of Evermore. Anyways, yep, but, uh, yep, yep, regrowth. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I'm saying, though, is that he, we don't have to rush him back. It's not like, no. oh, God, we need him back now because we are not, you know, we're we're, we're in a death spiral. Yep. It, it, uh-huh. it really is like, it's like, take your time, make sure whatever this is, you're healed, and we'll, we'll, be, we'll still be okay. Mm-hmm. So I think that bodes well for his health hopefully when he does return that he's fine and that he hasn't been uh you know he's still very sore but he's going to try to come back at like 50 percent or 60 yeah. percent where you're you know you're like a shadow of yourself and then not only that you're risking making something worse yep and and, and then it really is uh, golf season before you know it <laughs> yeah exactly yeah it's like ooh, yeah we've, we've been through that kind of stuff way too much where Guys will come back early or something, and it's just, it's over, you know. But, mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, this has been a wonderful story with guys stepping up. And it, it's like, and, and it's like, even like uh, do you want to believe they always had the ability to? It's just, for some odd reason, it just wasn't there. Otherwise, we were maybe playing maybe just too tight. And now we've yeah. uh, maybe, you know, loosened up, up a tiny bit. Obviously, there's more goals allowed lately, but... Not that many. Not that Not many much. with the New Jersey. Yeah, the New Jersey game, especially. <laughs> just just Boston. Boston. But, uh, mm-hmm. yeah, it's that is a huge thing where now Kaprizov can come back closer to 100%. Obviously, 100% pretty much doesn't exist for any NHL player this time of year, I'm sure. But <laughs> even the most random, like, puck off of something, you know. Mm-hmm. So, um yeah, that's a very, very, very valuable point going forward with that. Um, and kind of like how we were, you know, like kind of like, again, like backtracking, like yeah, obviously if you're too reliant on one goalie, that's what's killed us. And then the perfect example was 03 where we had two competent goalies, each each win a series. Like one kind of maybe started out the series, we got down three to one, we switched to the other. I believe it was Fernandez and then Rolison saved the day versus Colorado. He continued oh, into Vancouver. It, oh, it was opposite. It was, the other, 
It was the other way around. Fernandez oh. was the the goalie that saved us in Colorado. Oh, okay. Whoops. <laughs> yep. oh, and then okay. Rolla, Ro- Rollison bailed us out against Vancouver. Vancouver. <laughs> oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. yeah, those are the two great. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, they was those were awesome stories and two of the greatest moments ever. The game seven victory. So this, yeah, maybe maybe something like that could happen here. But um, obviously, I see Gustafson as kind of hopefully the game one starter. But even if Fern- uh, Fernandez, even if Fleury, <laughs> who's probably the more Fernandez type versus the two at the uh, when you think about it, um, yeah, I would say so. Uh, if he starts, hopefully, you know, you can have a chance to go to Gustafson earlier than what we did last year when it was too little too late. <laughs> Well, hopefully whoever goalie that we have doesn't need as much smelling salts to stay in the game like Manny Fernandez always did. <laughs> yeah, that guy was crazy, wasn't he? <laughs> he, 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 was, uh, he was eccentric, to say the least. <laughs> Talented, but crazy. <laughs> pouty, very pouty. Mm-hmm. Yep, he, had, uh, he was not the, happy kid, not the happiest guy in the world, that's for sure. No. So, dare we, <clears throat> if uh, does anything else in your mind regarding the general wild, or should we uh, dip into the prospects a bit, or maybe mess around in fan interaction off and on? Because, yep. We could probably go to the prospects. Okay. I, mean, I, I think I think we've pretty much covered the, at least the current trajectory of the wild, at least for right now. Okay. Oh, maybe real quick, since we were talking about Marcus Johansson not too long ago, do you want yeah. me to get to Brian Herrera's question? Sure, go for it. Okay, might as well, right? Yeah, because because this show, if you're uh, obviously um, if you're a regular listener to Brave the Wild, it, you know, oftentimes I go like game reviews and the Mike Badano and all that good stuff, and then previews and prospects and then fan interaction. This one, everything's kind of merged together, just so people know. And if there's a Mike, and yes, the Mike Badano Award winner for this week is Matt Boldy, <laughs> so that's a definite. Um, Brian Herrera. Says uh, Marcus J. Marcus Johansson has surprised many Wild fans with his return, looking like a top six winger. He is working great with Boldy and Eck, and that is a like you said that could be the top line right now. Um, do you think he will be bumped down with Nyquist's recovery, or uh, do you think uh, the Wild uh, will uh, resign him this time around with his results? Um, for me personally, I think uh, I think you want to leave him where he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, uh, I would agree with that. I, mm-hmm. It's interesting. I, I kind of heard this same discussion on Score North with Judd, Zolgad, and Declan, and Jesse Pierce. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, that... and they and they were talking about you know Nyquist too as being you know, you know because obviously he has not played in a long time, uh, as he's still trying to recover from I think his shoulder injury or whatever. Yep. And the question is, is will does he just immediately get plugged in the lineup because we acquired him mm-hmm. or, the, you know, or, do, you know, meaning that, will that be some kind of like, uh, uh, as Judd described a management decision where Bill's like, I don't care. I got him here. You find a way to put him in the lineup, yeah. you know, or is, is Johansson going to be like, well, Hey, um, he can go in if, uh, for whatever reason, the chemistry between him and Boldy disappears or, there's that, um, yeah. You know, like starts to fade. Um, otherwise, it's you know it's Johansson and Boldy. Let's keep it going because it's the uh, yeah, yep. it's 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 what's working right now. Um, you know, I mean, they only gave up what a fifth for Nyquist, I think. Yeah, yeah, because and, it's, and, yeah, like I a, mean, yep. it's I don't know. Does that really necessitate? Oh, well, gave up a fifth for him. I, I mean, I don't. They gave up more for Johansson, so yeah. I, I mean. I, I think personally you would want to keep things the way they are. Be, you know, the only question is then does Nyquist, I don't know if this would be possible, but would Nyquist go on the other side? And I guess the question is who would be the center then? You know, I think Eric Sinek is, is, is an ideal center for a lot of ways because he's your guy that's going to do the, the the grunt work in the, in the along the wall and in the tough areas of the ice. He adds that kind of... Uh, kind of like sandpaper element a little bit not that he's trying to crush people but he does a lot of the really hard physical work that helps give Johansson and again um Boldy a little more space on the ice or you know he digs out those pucks that then they can take advantage of hopefully if the 
if you know if there's defense that are crowding around those little board battles um, that they can capitalize on. So I think that's going to be a really interesting decision to see because I'm sure, um, especially with uh, Garen's knowledge of Nyquist uh, being a little bit in you know understanding of his game, that he'll probably be curious to see what that would be like. But at the same time, if things are going well. I don't know. I think it would be pretty tough to to put Johansson on the shelf and say thank you, but we're going with Nyquist now, and now you're going to be a third liner. I think that would be mm-hmm. kind of foolish, but who knows? I mean, yeah. Oh. I would. Yeah, I don't think that's the best idea. Yeah, definitely, because we've been, you know, it's like the Wild have been kind of searching and searching, you know, with a searchlight, mm-hmm. whatever, for somebody that can have chemistry with Boldy to kind of get him going, and there he is. So taking him away, that would be a huge risk. I mean, who knows? I mean, Nyquist is a good fit as well. But, uh, yeah, it's mm-hmm. like you don't want to mess up what's, what's, what's working, especially when you consider the circumstances of how we've, for the most part, stayed very, very strong with uh, Kaprizov being out. So mm-hmm. that would be really tough to see them uh, change that. I'm, I'm guessing that won't happen again, like unless you said – the chemistry disappears, which is always possible, I guess. Yeah, the question would be just how short would that leash be? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, you know, especially in the playoffs when you know games are magnified. Yeah. Yep. Is it just one game and suddenly you're like, nope, we're gonna swap out Johansson with Nyquist, and mm-hmm. you know, just because maybe they had one game where they got shut down, or is it gonna take a couple games and then suddenly you're gonna make that switch? You know, when your back's against the wall, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's for sure. And uh, we'll see how that turns out. Uh, otherwise, there are... Yep, so some of these are prospect-related for the most part, which is good. That's kind of where we're heading. Um, yeah, like the fanat- tenure deal with Fanatics. Yep, these were a guy named Duck at Crease and Assist. It's, it's uh, one guy. Yep. <laughs> that guy's an idiot. Uh, that guy's yeah, an what idiot. Was what was he thinking? <laughs> what was he thinking? <laughs> No. <laughs> oh, that brave the wild guy calls it gets into that uh, crease podcast. I think I, I think he made a fool of himself too. <laughs> I think he's a, I think he's a very smart individual. Oh, <laughs> very smart. That, very uh, smart. Yeah, crease and assist the legend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I guess the one that's kind of, it's like a semi prospect, but obviously it's more like wild related is. Uh, Derek Felska of Crease and Assist as <laughs> will Kalen yeah. Addison. Yep, will Kalen Addison be on, be on the wild roster next season, uh, at the start of next season, or is he the, already the odd man out? Who? That's that's definitely a strong debate right now. Um, I would like to believe he's going to be back. I think I. It's just my you know my opinion. I I have a feeling he's going to. I think Garen wants to give him another chance. That's my guess because it was kind of sort of his guy coming from Pittsburgh. That's at least the way I think I see it, but the, the actions that Garen, Garen and uh, Dean, Dean Evison's actions have been saying something else. That's the one thing. Um, but I'm going to lean towards he will be here at the start of the season. Yeah. I I guess I think he's gone. Mm-hmm. I, and the reason for it is this, you know, there's a, there's a couple different things that come to my mind. So, so Bill Garen was brought up you know, he was drafted and played for at least initially out of the college with New Jersey. Mm-hmm. And that GM was Lou Lamorello. And oh, if yeah. you know anything Ooh. about Lou Lamorello, Lou Lamorello is a guy mm-hmm. where loyalty to the team is paramount. Mm-hmm. In other words, if they tell you to stand and, you know, if they tell you to do something, they expect it to be done. No questions, no complaints. And without really kind of any kind of uh, discussion or debate, like you you do what you're told, you play the role that they tell you to play, or we'll find somebody else. There's not a lot of like they're they're not looking for some kind of mutual agreement. Like okay, we talked about it and we agree that this would be best for you. No, it's like here's what we're going to have you do, or this is what we're telling you about your game. And I don't know, I think the rift that he created when he kind of disagreed with what the coaches had to say about his game, 
Mm. Uh oh. That that mm. you know, it's 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 like, you know, the only thing I was and again, this isn't, this may be. Yeah, I forgot um, about that. Oh. This this <laughs> this may be this may sound like I'm taking a, a small thing and making it bigger, but honestly, look at this organization's history. So Brennan Minnell decides, you know what? <laughs> I don't want to. I don't want to play. I don't want to play in Iowa anymore. I've, I've been there, done that. I've shown you what I can do. I'm gonna go to the KHL and show you that I can play. I can be the stud there too. And as soon as he did that, mm-hmm. the Wild were like, "See you later." Yeah. You yep. know, they, they they didn't care. Mm-hmm. You no, know, you you don't be, you don't want to be on board with their program. Then fine. We'll, yep. we'll we'll put you we'll put you in another program. In, insert F bomb. <laughs> well, well, Sorry. it's pretty much you, we're not gonna we're not gonna be pushed around. We're, you're not the one that's gonna tell us how to handle you, and that's that's how it's gonna be. Well, fine, you don't want to be here. Fine, we'll give you another opportunity someplace else. Goodbye. Thanks, mm-hmm. thanks for what you did. Goodbye. Mm-hmm. You know, very kind of kind of cold, but that's their thing. You know, same thing with uh, you know, um, Hovenov. Oh, you know, yes. Did not want did did not want to get with the the fitness de- demands that were given to him on more than one occasion. Tim Army, uh, team the team uh, development staff all talked to him about his uh, love for junk food, basically saying, oh, "Hey, you got to get serious about this." He he apparently felt he could still play well and still have his uh, double chocolate lattes and <laughs> cheeseburgers. <laughs> and well, you saw what happened, you know. Yeah, yep. Yeah. Part oh. they parted ways, and you know, um, mm. same thing with Addison. I think you know if you look at the the team's prospect pool. I mean, it's been talked about many times on your show yeah. that there is mm. a whole stable full of defensive prospects. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Do you, do yep. you, yeah. Shame on really, <laughs> I, I mean, and it sounds harsh, but do you really want to create tension? When there are literally six people waiting for that job, yeah, like the yeah. Que- the queue the queue is pretty packed, and there's definitely some players that we've already talked rather highly about, like Brock Faber, Jack Pierce, yes. oh, yes. you know, and, and we haven't even talked about like Kyle Masters yet. Mm-hmm. But I mean, those, mm-hmm. those those people, you know, those those are all people that are doing what the organization expects them to do. They're in there's has it as least as far as we know. There's no tension. So hope, they're already that. looking at the they're, well, but what I'm saying is though they're mm-hmm. already looking at the future. So if you create tension, to me it makes for a very easy out for the team to be like, you know what? Maybe we can get a third round pick for you in a mm-hmm. good draft, and mm-hmm. we'll rather take our chances on that than having to deal with uh, an unsatisfied player or a dissatisfied player. <laughs> I, I think that this is the, I think that's what this organization would do. You know, if if we were a pro- if we were a team that maybe did not have a pro, you know, like a big stable of defensemen that are waiting, then maybe they would might be like, okay, well let's let's talk about this, because because we need you, right? But yeah. now because there's so many there, you know, between, you know, I haven't even mentioned Lambos, Cars and Lambos. Yep. You know, there's a lot of people there, so it's not a real That's good time one. to create. It's not a real good time to create a wave. If you're Kaylin Addison, yeah, I mean, it just, it just you know, isn't. Yeah, like earlier, earlier in the year, I was, I was completely saying the same thing, and then I, and then I, <laughs> and then I just had this weird feeling, like, oh, I think he's gonna keep him. So, no, you definitely got me there. <laughs> you definitely got me with this one. Yeah, because uh, there, yeah, like, like I said in the past, it's like I buried myself here with this answer. Was all the different defensemen in the system? There are. Too many, honestly. Uh, like uh, you, you could come back and say, you know, how we're all excited about the prospects and how so many of them are probably, you know, th- it's going to be too hard for them all to make it, especially with, you know, like Faber's like really high likely going to make it. Hopefully wins the national mm-hmm. championship. We'll get to that super shortly. Um, and uh, yeah, and Addison, it's like he's he's definitely shown promise on the power play, but there's always been something missing. It's like, mm-hmm. yeah, he's been good, but he's been good, but, you know, this and that. Like the defensive, uh, you know, defensive game hasn't been there. The size, Obviously, size is something you can't really help too much. Um, so, 
and there's other guys that kind of, like you said, there's there's beyond competition, beyond, especially with, you know, like Kyle Masters kind of popping up out of nowhere. He's uh, been an unbelievable mm-hmm. story, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, you know, in Addison's case, too, like you mentioned, his size. Yeah. Yep. Si- si- size is, I mean, most of, if there's anything that I guess, not that it really makes it any worse or better, but if you look at most of the Wilds prospects defensemen, there's nobody really that's a bigger defender. Like, mm-hmm. you have definitely shown a, a, a want or at least a preference for mobility over size. Um, so, I mean, most of our prospect defensemen seem to like they're all about six feet tall. Yeah, kind um, of medium. Yep. Literally, well, you could, all, you could argue that they're maybe slightly below average in height mm-hmm. for today's NHL defensemen. Um, but they all kind of have a similar, you know, mobility skill set to them. Mm-hmm. Um, and and so, Kalen Addison being, what, 5'9", I think he is, or 5'10", um, doesn't put him like, you know, as a like a might like he's a, a a super tiny body out there, but still, you know, at the same time, he is, you know, it'd be different maybe if he was a bigger defender that gives us something that the rest of the pool doesn't, you know, and 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 he's shorter, so yeah. he's he's not he's not he doesn't give us something that we wouldn't already kind of already have, which is a whole stable of slightly undersized defensemen, I guess. Mm-hmm. Yeah, for sure, and it's uh, definitely a good, definitely a good point. Yep. So he's 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 definitely uh, got his back against the wall the way things are going. As for like just kind of real quick for the heck of it, just for the sure. shits, shits and giggles, <laughs> uh, Alexander Hovanov, our our friend that obviously wanted to go a completely different direction, is mm-hmm. uh, in the VHL. The VHL, yeah. <laughs> 40, uh, 43 games, 15 points, uh, five games in the playoffs. Are you ready for the point total in the VHL? Yeah. Zero. Ouch. <laughs> yeah, so that sucks. Yeah, it's it's sad. I was a massive fan with him with uh, uh, Montkin, Mont, Montkin, Wildcats of the Q. I really enjoyed covering him for um, MNW prospects now, like MNW Young Guns. I had a ball keeping up with him, but awesome season and all that could have had a hundred, but of course things were show slowed with, uh, you know, the pandemic and the shutdowns and all that, especially in Canada, even more so, but, mm, mm, um, he has well, vanished off the face of the earth. Well, it's about self-discipline. It's just like Dimitri Sokolov. I mean, the, oh, yes. the parallels, <laughs> the parallels between those two are, are, Man. it's uncanny, you know, both mm. very talented Russian players. And again, personally, I don't think it has nothing to do with their, their heritage it's just the no. fact that they both suffered they both suffered the same fate in terms of a lack of attention to the 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 athletic demands of a professional athlete and mm-hmm. and and that's not that's not something today where you know you you look at a player and you say wow he's in real good shape that makes him stand out no that's the expectation for everybody you're expected to take care of yourself physically, mentally, all that kind of thing, where you're doing all the off-ice training, you are in supremely good shape. And if you're not, that that's that's the kind of standout you don't want to be. Where, you know, when you're, when you're picking up McDonald's when everyone else is getting the wheatgrass uh, smoothie, mm-hmm. you're, you're going to stand out yeah. in a bad way. And, and, and basically that's looked at at teams as, like having a lack of professionalism and and they're only going to tell you so many times you need to quote unquote clean up your act in regards to getting serious about your fitness because um, they're, they're just not going to put up with it because they know that it's going to affect your performance they know that you know if you're not fit you're not going to be able to do what you need to do and and they can't rely on you and they're they're not going to tell you too many times before they just you know like we've seen basically just give up yeah and and, you know, and they they really haven't been wrong yet have they <laughs> no it's not gone away but yeah they really haven't yeah True. yeah i mean if hovanov did not go over to back to russia and just tear it up he did. yeah then sokolov did slightly better but he's also slightly older yeah at, at, at least he had some points for the khl in the playoffs five games three points you know yeah. so he's he's a little bit older too but and again you compare 
what was it? Uh, Ho, not Kovanov, Hovanov with, uh, what was he, a third round pick, Sokolov, seventh. Yeah, but mm-hmm. was once thought of as a, well, look what I just did, was thought, of, was thought of once as a first round talent, but of course, for yep. the same reasons that uh, we've discussed. He went to the seventh round. <laughs> yep, we were we were hoping maybe it's a little little grand slam home run in the you know, <laughs> in the bottom of the ninth or something with him, but I, I guess not. Oh, no. um, so dare we venture some more into the prospects because those guys were former yeah. prospects. Yeah, yep, <laughs> former prospects. Um, Iowa's kind of been up and down. Nick Patan is officially leading the club in scoring, but a lot of good. Uh, a lot of good conversation regarding Marco Rossi. I'd have to say the pa- Rossi. Sorry, I did it again, just like Mikhail <laughs> Gronlin. But uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Rossi's definitely been uh, definitely been better the past uh, X amount of games. Uh, he's been in all situations, which is a much better mm-hmm. much better to hear than what was before. We used to hear that about uh, Connor DeWer in all the different mm-hmm. situations, and that's why he made it to the NHL and he's stayed in the NHL because he obviously was a you know, more of a scoring player in the AHL and in the NHL, he's been, been that really nice um, uh, penalty killer and mm-hmm. such and fourth line st- style, which has kept him in the NHL. Him being, um, of course, Connor DeWer, Rossi, has been doing a bit of the same, and we shall see. He's uh, he's definitely been much more engaged in play away from the puck as well as with the puck. Mm-hmm. I think that's really kind of like. When he got sent down initially, um, you could kind of tell he didn't want to be there. Like, yes. Yep. <laughs> you know, like, he was he was okay in terms of, like, you know, usually he was mostly engaged and interested, I guess, on the power play. <laughs> um, and, and then kind of actually, as I saw it described in a zone coverage article, uh, Tim Army reduced his ice time. Mm. and basically said, okay, well, if you're not going to do these things, X, Y, and Z, you're going to learn to do X, Y, and Z because I'm going to reduce your ice time until you start doing it. And then suddenly he became a little more focused when he was, you know, not away from the puck where he was, you know, playing more responsible defensively, being a little more uh, active, especially on the penalty kill when he was used. And now he's playing a more complete game, which is, that is what development is. And I know that for a lot of fans out there that have been clamoring because they'll look and see Marco Rossi had a hat trick mm-hmm. or Marco Rossi had one goal and two assists. They sit there and they'll be like, why isn't he here? There's more to it than just scoring. Yeah, a lot. And, and, and the thing is, is if you're going to be a center in the NHL, you have to do more than, I mean, you do have to do something besides score. And, you know, like, I'll use a, a recent opponent, Patrice Bergeron. Cool. Patrice Bergeron does a hell of a lot more than just score points. <laughs> he is everything. Now, is Marco Ro- Rossi Patrice Bergeron? I think there's actually a lot of similarities. Patrice Bergeron's not a very big guy, but he makes it work. He's very defensively responsible. Um, he plays in all three zones actively with as much energy in the defensive zone as he does in the offensive zone. That's what you want Marco Rossi to be. And so they're (laughs) trying to get him so he plays that way in the AHL. It it would be ludicrous to them be like, well, he's not doing the AHL, but I'm sure if we brought him up, he'll start doing it in the NHL. No, that won't work that way. (laughs) So he's he's been much better, um, but there's been other things that have been better for the for for the Iowa Wild lately. Like you mentioned, Nick Patan. Yeah. He's really mm-hmm. he's really been the skilled catalyst. Um, mm-hmm. Especially on the man here. advantage, he's been really important. Um, they've also had much better play out of their prospect defensemen. Uh, Damon Hunt, Ryan mm-hmm. O'Rourke. Um, mm-hmm. You know, even Simon Johansson are playing pretty good minutes for the for the Iowa Wild, and and right now the team's just showing a lot of uh, cohesion. Um, Army is getting something. I mean, it not necessarily it's all about points and everything, but the team is playing together, and you can see that, and that's allowed them to kind of get through some tough times for a while there. Like the Wild, when the Wild were having trouble scoring, Iowa was yeah, going same through. Time. <laughs> Iowa was going through an even bigger scoring drought, 
and it wasn't because someone was missing. They just couldn't seem to find the back of the net. Nobody could. Mm-hmm. And then mm-hmm. over time, they you know they kind of started to get work their way out of it. I think kind of a unsung piece of that is Stephen Fogarty. Stephen Fogarty mm. has been kind of a yeah. He's been he's been important on the power play. He plays oh. kind of the bumper screener kind of role, and he does a really good job at moving the puck around. And he also has a penchant for scoring kind of in the clutch. And that was kind of an element that was missing when he was kind of out of the lineup with an injury. <laughs> and his return has kind of helped the team get back track. They had a, I watched the game on Tuesday in San Diego, uh, a fantastic game, where they won in a shootout when they were down 3 to nothing in the first period, and they didn't look mm. like they wanted to be there. And then they crawled their baby, they're crawled, clawed their way back into the game. <laughs> and um, it's important because they're in a hell of a dogfight to try to get into the AHL playoffs. The, mm. the Central is very tight, um, with the exception of Milwaukee, which is way above everybody else. They're kind of like the Boston Bruins of the AHL right now. They're just tearing it up. Um, but they're in a kind of a dogfight for the, you know, kind of toward the, the bottom few playoff spots. But, you know, that's what you want because you want those kids to develop. So um, every game's a big game and for the Iowa Wild right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's nice to see them playing better. Yeah, but like that whole two-one loss, like every game, one nothing, two-one. That was frustrating because it's like mm-hmm. <laughs> the wild, when the Wild were going through the, the uh, same thing at the exact same time. It was like, oh come on, it was like mm-hmm. organization like wide type of uh, drought or whatever the heck it is, power outage, whatever the word is. Yeah, Fogarty's had a hell of a year. He's been a nice veteran addition to that Iowa club for sure. Um, obviously kind of, you know, one of those guys that's kind of been clawing, clawing, clawing forever, unfortunately, at 29 years of age. Um, Jesper Volstedt, yep, the the goals mm-hmm. against average keeps dropping a little lower, a little lower, which has been nice. Same percentage of 91 right on the button, 2.69 mm-hmm. goals against average. Yeah, I mean, I was, it's nice to see them with a the winning record because for the longest time it felt like this team was, just like, ah, oh, are they just too young? What's the deal? It's just And obviously lots of injuries, and the Wild were desperate as well, play, uh, bringing guys up, and it was a combination of things going on <laughs> at the same time. Um, but nice to see them. Hopefully they can, uh, nice to see them playing better anyway, excuse me, and Rossi being a huge part of that, and Fogarty, like you said, and Beckman's at mm-hmm. 23 goals. That's nice. That's definitely yeah, and nice. Mm-hmm. And he's been, he's currently out of the lineup with an injury, Oh, yeah. So, mm. so these last few mm. wins have I been, that. Mm. yeah. So these last few wins have been without Beckman, who oh, has been really mm-hmm. their their best goal scorer this year. Mm-hmm. So that you know, yeah. and, and not to mention no Sammy Walker also, because yep. he's been called up with the big club. So, you know that they've missed, they're missing two important players in terms of their offensive production, but they're finding a way to get it done. So again, a testament to that team's ability to kind of adapt and react to their you know that's life of the miners you know you're you're not Mm -hmm. in control of everything what happens at the top trickles down to you pretty quick Mm -hmm. it's 100 percent 100 percent what happens trickle down scoring drought or whatever but obviously because and injuries yep trickle down injuries (laughs) god forbid um let's see so yep the main prospects that have really have been quite a story i brought them up a lot but uh now we can talk Hear it from uh, Derek as well. I'm sure you've yep. And uh, I'm, I I don't know if you've mentioned them off and on on uh, the Crease and Assist podcast. Kyle Masters. Oh, what a jump! What a an amazing jump from last season. He was pretty much that stay at home, 14 point type of guy. Uh, fourth round, 118th overall in 2021 Red Deer Rebels Western Hockey mm-hmm. League. He's now on the Kamloops Blazers and. Holy mother of Moses, it just keeps happening. <laughs> he's not like a point-to-game player. He's, he's just yeah. an unbelievable. And, of course, a right-shot defenseman. Kalen Edison, uh, objects in your mirror are closer than they appear. <laughs> uh, mm-hmm. six, 65 games, 11 goals, 53 assists, and he's a plus 25, which has now surpassed the career high. I remember at the beginning of the year, I think he was just floating around plus two. So the mm-hmm. last month or so... He was obviously already he was obviously on an offensive binge, but the last month or so has been a wildfire. Yeah, he's a. 
I think I think there's something to be said though when you change teams in the sense that mm, yes. uh, yeah. Red, Red Deer is kind of a defensive minded team, and Red Deer had a really good offensive defenseman on that team named Archdeep Baines. I mm. think he's a Vancouver prospect. I could be wrong. But R. Steve Baines was he was always on the score sheet, like all the time. Oh yeah. And oh and, my god. Yeah, he, he was huge. And you know, <laughs> Masters was kind of the, oh, the hundred and twelve points, he, sorry. But he was kind of like he was kind of the stay at home compliment to you know, R. Steve Baines. And and now with uh with Masters playing in, in Kamloops you know, with a team that has a lot of offensive weapons to it, you know, I know we we're going to probably talk about Caden Bank here, but you also have, yep. of course, Logan Stankoven on that team, who's a fantastic player. Unfortunately, he's a Dallas prospect. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and But he's, there's a lot of weapons on that team, and that has opened him to kind of blossom in his offensive game, where you see that mm. opportunity probably happen, where maybe in Red Deer, the role he was expected to play made it so that he was taking less opportunities because honestly they had another guy that was just an absolute stud that was going to take all those chances. Um, I, I think his I think his development is interesting. I mean, um, Brandon Molesky was actually talking about on K Fan that mm-hmm. when he went to the Wild Development Camp, he was told by the staff there, "Hey, I know, you know, like." Because you get like the roster or whatever, and they show like the statistics from the season to see the, you know, whether it's team green or team white, and you look at the statistics, and you know, you you see players on there that might have Excuse me. very <clears throat> modest totals, like you know, a handful of goals, a handful of points, and you're like going, hmm. why, why why are you here, right? So he's a <laughs> prospect down there, and it probably didn't jump off the page, and the prospect uh, development people, I'm not sure if it was Matt Hendricks, I think I think it was mm-hmm, that kind of yeah. told him. Hey, keep an eye on this kid. Mm-hmm. He has a lot of ability, and he's kind of a dark horse kind of player. That you know, he might be kind of flying under the radar here. Where this kid has a lot of good tools. Um, the biggest thing that Kyle Masters gets a lot of credit for, apart from his mobility, is his smarts. He is a very intelligent player. He anticipates plays very well, and he goes to the places on the ice where he needs to be. And, you know, when you're in a defensive role, you know, you use that to be in solid defensive positioning. But maybe with with Cam Loops, he's finding more opportunities to be more involved offensively. And that's certainly shown with the points, yeah. you know. And um, that's 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 awesome for him, obviously. Um, and, of course, we hope that it's awesome for the Wild. But, you know, he is a prospect. Um, I always suggest to people to pump the brakes because... You know, junior numbers are shiny. You know, mm-hmm. and yeah. like we talked about with just you know, just not to you know repeat what we said before, but like Alex Hovanov, hundred point player for the Q, gives you all this reason to be excited. But then obviously we know how it turns out. So again, I I would just say people, not to say that you know temper your expectations completely, but at the same time understand that, you know, there's still a lot of development left. It's not like I don't think Kyle Masters is a player that's going to be playing for Minnesota next year. No. <laughs> I, th- I think it's no. way, way too early to say that. We'll, yeah. we'll still, we, we won't know what we have probably for another two years at least. Mm-hmm. And and that's after he goes to Iowa. Yeah, cause like probably next year, I think. Yeah, because he turns 20 on April 9th. Yeah. So, so whatever his right season. Mm-hmm. Yep. So whenever his season's done this season, uh, I mean, I personally would hope that he, their team does well and they play in the Memorial Cup, mm-hmm. and, and and that goes well for him because that means he'll have a lot, have had a lot of, obviously playoff games. But you know, whenever his junior season's over this year, my my guess is he would, probably the very next day he would be flying to, wherever the Iowa Wild are, whether they're in Des Moines or elsewhere, and. Mm-hmm. You know, he might get in a few games, although typically speaking, most players that come straight out of junior, um, especially since, you know, the, you know, teams are in a playoff race, that's not a place where they're going to give junior players a lot of ice time. <laughs> no, <laughs> they're, not, they're, they're, they're not going to be like, oh, yeah. 
We absolutely let's, need these points. Let's put in this player that has no pro <laughs> experience. Sure. Let's go. We have top line, right? Or top top pairing in this case. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> top power player. They're still no. going to get. They're still going to go with what got him there. Yeah. And it's, and he'll be lucky if he can get in a few games this season, most likely, unless knock on wood, you have a bunch of injuries and you have no choice but to use them. But mm-hmm. there, there's still there's still quite a few guys I think that would have to be hurt for the, for for them to start leaning on a on a player fresh out of junior. Mm-hmm. No, for sure. And yep, it's uh. Yep, it's going to be really interesting to see his progress. Like, how how does he, you know, is he able to take that next step going into next year and beyond? So, yeah, I I hope so. I'm hopeful. Obviously, we've seen guys jump way up and then flame out. Unfortunately, <clears throat> over and off. No, I'm kidding. Yeah. <laughs> over and off, obviously, but this guy's probably got a little bit better mindset. I would hope, uh, obviously, than uh, what Hovenoff did. Um, I love the Kamloops Blazers logo as well and jerseys. I guess I, maybe I'm in the minority with that one. But I'm a fan. Uh, yeah, Caden Bankier, his teammate. Oh, man. Mm. Another guy that jumped up in such a big way. Uh, a more offensive position, center. He mm-hmm. is slightly older, so he could be he could be on Iowa very soon. Uh, he's 20 years of age already. Six foot two, got it like that, left shot center. Um, 84 points in 55 games, 48 assists, 36 goals. 34 points and again the Kamloops Blazers have been blazing offensively and it, what a nice story he's been obviously um this guy's a third round pick 86th overall so reasonably you know there's, there's a chance that uh guys in, in in that part of the draft are NHL prospects there's a chance um but it's nice to see guys like this take huge steps forward because I remember hearing his name as well last uh summer and all that obviously yeah it it Ironically, it was these two guys, and I remember thinking, them? Hmm, okay, I, I guess, and then here, here we are. Well, he, he he surprised a lot of people when he made Team Canada uh, yes, in yes, the yep. 20s, you know, and, you know, Team Canada definitely leans usually heavily on players that are, you know, highly touted and highly drafted or going to be highly drafted um, kind of players, and, and Caden Bank here... <laughs> You know, if he was going to make it, he was going to have to 100% earn it. His draft status was not going to just give him a shot, you know, give him a spot on the team. No. And he 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 won people over with his work ethic. He won people over with his a willingness to play a role. Because you know that's the thing about World Juniors, just like it is for the Olympics. You know, you have all these star caliber talent. And, you know, most of these guys are used to being the big deal on their respective teams. And now some of them are being, you know, put in second or third or fourth line situations where they're not used to having to do that kind of work because they don't have to do that kind of work wherever they play. But, you know, Caden Bankier wasn't too, you know, probably as a player who knew that he, you know, basically the only right answer is yes, sir. (laughs) He (laughs) was willing to do the grunt work and he played really well and handled himself very well. So I think that's a good tip, feather in the cap for him. Mm-hmm. And um, he seems to have uh, shown that he can be more than just a complimentary player. I mean, he's not, you know, he's not the Kamloops Blazers' leading scorer, but no. <laughs> he's definitely an important player for them. And I've seen a lot of situations where he is creating on his own. That, that to me, is the most exciting part about him and the fact that, you know, when you look at players... You know, when you think back, I think back to, like, uh, Mario Lemieux and, like, Kevin Stevens. Ooh, yeah. Okay. You could have had anybody in that line, and, and they would have got a ton of points. Kevin Stevens happened to be that lucky guy that would be fed the puck, and all he had to do was bury it. Which, again, I mean, I, I know that's a skill set that people have, but it could have been a lot of different people. Bank here is showing the ability to create plays on his own, yeah. where he's creating opportunities for himself. And he's finishing on his own. And to me, that's what you want to see. Can a player, do they need somebody to be, to, to meet their potential? Or can they find a way to assert themselves where they create something out of nothing? And we're, we saw that this year with Caden Bank here, where he was able to create opportunities for himself and finish. So that to me is what makes him more intriguing and exciting. And, uh, mm-hmm, you know, but still, you know, just like Masters, you know, 
it's not like he's going to be with the Wild next year. <laughs> he's 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 still got to he's still got to develop. He's still got to do the right things. But at the very least, it he looks encouraging, and he certainly would not have been signed if he didn't. So, um, more power to him. Yeah, absolutely. Very nice. Uh, very nice story. And again, like the right mindset. Like I said, willing to you know willing to to muck it up you know and willing to kind of do what it takes to make it Mm -hmm. and yep he's he's the second leading scorer at the very least but yeah that uh, other prospect from dallas uh definitely leading the way there with a few less games one thing really important that i forgot is (laughs) i better do the DraftKings ad uh, ad. sure go ahead (laughs) so my apologies uh so the biggest tournament in college basketball is underway, and the action is getting started on DraftKings Sportsbook, one of America's top-rated sportsbook apps. Right now, new customers can bet just $5 on any pregame money line bet and score $150 in bonus bets if your team wins. That's a big if, by the way, <laughs> especially if it was Kansas. No, I'm <laughs> Plus combined, <laughs> combined, thankfully it wasn't. Yep, I'm glad. I don't like that team. Plus combined multiple bets for a shot and even bigger payout. DraftKings will be featuring parlays and odds boosts all tournament long so be sure to check the DraftKings Sportsbook app every day to see what they have in store so of course we're about to talk about uh the NH uh excuse me the hockey NCAA tournament but for now this is about the the basketball one so it's a perfect segue uh matchups like Princeton coming up versus Creighton that's an exciting one maybe you get a 15th seed going to the elite eight how cool would that be um Especially, you know, Princeton's had some success in the NCAA hockey tournament in the past. I remember keeping up with that. That was fun. Obviously an underdog just like this club. So it's kind of easy to root for those random East Coast teams that you don't hear about a whole lot because we're kind of sick of hearing about the Denver Pioneers and the North Dakota fighting whatever they are. No, fighting Hawks. (laughs) So um, They're already done. They're not going. And they're already done. That is awesome. Yes. I'm very happy about that. So, yep, keep your eye on those college basketball matchups. Yeah, it's Thursday, so here we are coming up. And it's going to be Final Four weekend before you know it. Uh, and they make us wait an extra week for the NH, uh, the, excuse me, the hockey via Frozen Four, which is a bummer. <laughs> Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and sign up with code XXX. It is not... Uh, film related it's just a code so don't worry uh, right now new customers can bet five dollars on any pregame money line bet and get 150 dollars in bonus bets if your team wins that would be the houston cougars i suppose only at DraftKings sportsbook with code xxx minimum age and eligibility restrictions apply see show notes for details and of course the xxx is because it's kind of a universal thing this isn't you know it's every single podcast there is because it's biggest thing going on right now and now we get to talk about our our <laughs> ncaa tournament the one we really like the most not that there's anything wrong with the basketball one but oh that hockey one is something i enjoy i thought i had it up oh boy yeah there it is okay so minnesota versus kinesis that's kind of cool they've made the tournament once uh they have all the of all the minnesota teams in one region and then in the super region which would be like who we'd play in the frozen four if we make it Denver versus Cornell are the fourth seed. Uh, Cornell's not, but they've obviously had some good seasons in the past. Boston University, Jordan Greenway had a hat trick there once, which is like insane to imagine, versus Western Michigan. P.J. Flex, former team, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Quinnipiac, a team I would root for if the Gophers don't make it, because I don't really care for the other Minnesota teams because they talk too much, versus Merrimack. <laughs> Uh, Harvard, Harvard, maybe a rematch of the 89 championship game. We'll see. Versus Ohio State. Of course, you have, we have a, a, hmm, say you have Josh, you have Josh Healy in that. Yep. In that for Harvard. Yep, exactly. Yep, that's the one. Josh Healy. Or, oh, oh uh, Ryan Healy. Yep, he had, yep, eight Ryan points. Healy, yep. Yeah, no, that's all right. <laughs> yep, one, another one of those freshmen who is, you know, earning his way and not in a whole lot of situations yet. 33 games and eight points, two goals. For Ryan Healy of Harvard, I just like saying that. I don't know why. It makes me think of uh, Matlock. Let's see. Okay. So yeah, yeah, because that's where you know in the story, that's where Matlock went to school. Michigan, sure. yeah, a lot of people might see them as the number one or number two seed, but they're number three for some reason because Quinnipiac was good. Versus Colgate, mm-hmm. no, no toothpaste included with that one. And <laughs> sorry, Penn State and Michigan Tech, who used to be a powerhouse about 40-some years ago, but um, they've had up-and-down years over the course of time. Um, 
yeah, I'm. Oh, I I love this so much, and I hope the Gophers can go all the way this time. Mm. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Um, you know, obviously not winning the Big Ten tournament for the mm. Gophers mm. was disappointing, mm-hmm. um, especially given the the no goal call um, yes. that that took place in that in that situation, um, which especially coming on the heels of that same, I think the same day, that was the same day the Wild played the Bruins. Yes. And they had the no goal. So that, that oh. was kind of the weird theme of the offsides reviews. Oh, three three in one day, right? Yeah, it was a lot oh. of Minnesota fans to handle. Um, oh. But, you know, the, the interesting thing is, I guess, you know, obviously, uh, at least going into that game, a lot of people were projecting whether the Golden Gophers were the, you know, the, the favorite uh, to win it all this year. And, uh, you know, I, a lot of people were talking even during that game, you know, whether it was uh, Ben Clymer with uh, Big Ten Sports mm-hmm. talking about whether this was one of the best or most talented Minnesota Golden Gopher teams. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's definitely, I think there's some argument that they could be one of the most talented teams they've had in the last 20 years, mm-hmm. uh, especially since we're now we're, 20 years away from their last national championship in 2003 yeah. Yeah. Uh, when they won in Buffalo when mm-hmm. they had a, a certain player by the name of Thomas Vanek yep. lead the way. <laughs> by the way, mm. if anyone wants to see something crazy, just look up old footage of Thomas Vanek when he was with the Gophers. Mm-hmm. Oh my God. Wasn't he good? But, oh, he was insane. Like how, oh. how, mm. how, well, not the, the thing that will strike you very quickly is how much more active he was than when you compare to what he was like with the Minnesota Wild. Uh, like he was, he yeah. was, he was everywhere on the ice. He was fast. Mm. Believe it or not, he was fast. And not only that, then he of course had the the offensive ability that was just at a different level than everybody else on the ice. Mm-hmm. And um, he was definitely amazingly fun to watch. Um, but kind of going back to this year's version, the Gophers. Obviously, you know, having number three overall, uh, Logan Cooley, yes, who well, really is, well. you know, he's he's, he's going to get take a long look at these last few games because this is the last you're going to see of him in the yeah. college ranks. Um, 52 points in 30-some games. Um, Jimmy Snuggerud. 35, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Sorry. Yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah, Jimmy Snuggerud with 49 points, <laughs> same amount of games. And then Matt Nyes, that top <laughs> line is really – the big separator that they have between themselves and most other teams in in the tournament. Uh, they're so skilled. They're big. Uh, well, more more Matt Nyes and Snuggerud are big. Not that Cooley's tiny or nothing, but mm-hmm. they're very skilled, very dangerous. Um, but I think the thing that, you know, where I think about 20 years ago, the, the, the X factor that people, you know, we fixate on, like, Thomas Vanek, and we fixate on... You know who the 2002 team had with, uh, like Grant Patolny and um, oh, man. Mm, Matt, Ko- Matt, mm. Matt, Matt Kowalska and Johnny Pohl and all that uh, stuff. Leo Pohl, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, that, that's what I was going to. 2002, it the, yeah. It, it, Sorry. But it was, the, but it was their defense that yeah. I think was really the X factor. Um, you yeah. know, when you think about Jordan Leopold in the 2002, you had mm. Jordan Leopold, Paul Martin. Mm. Um, <laughs> You know, uh, Judd Stevens, hmm. they were they were a fantastic blue line where they absolutely controlled the play. If you saw them, like you know, if you remember those days um, of the 2002 or 2003 Gophers, the Minnesota Golden Gophers and the power play were absolutely ridiculous. The way they moved the puck around and they could hit you from so many different angles, either from close or from range, and they really dominated. And that's that's really to me, I think the the thing that gets people. For myself, I get excited about when I think about this current Gophers group because they do have finally a really, really good blue line to go with that group of forwards. Mm-hmm. Jackson Lacombe, eight goals, yeah, 32 yeah. points. I mean, he is he is one of the best in the country, although I must say he did not have his best game against Michigan. I thought he looked kind of disinterested, which is mm-hmm. really weird in mm-hmm. such a big and important game. Uh, that concerns me. But he is a fantastic player, tremendous talent. Then you have Brock Faber, of course, the wild prospect. Yep. Um, more of a jack-of-all-trades kind of player, where he can kind of do a little bit of everything. Very smart. Uh, he has 23 points. His points are a little bit less just because he was hurt for a while. 
Uh, then Couple you have Ryan John. Yep, Ryan Johnson, another player with 18 points, and then yep. Mike Kester from Chaska. Uh, he has 25 points. I mean, there's there's they they have a really good top four that can produce, and they can control the tempo of play. And that to me has really kind of been the Gophers' X factor in terms of what makes them so much more difficult to play against than maybe some of these other schools, especially in their region. Um, you know, if you look at St. Cloud State, I know you're not a fan of St. Cloud State or Minnesota State, <laughs> but, you know, um, St. Cloud State, while they're a good team up front, they have some good firepower up front, um, their back end isn't nearly as explosive. Um, you know, they, they don't dominate as the play. But I should point out, though, too, both Minnesota State and um, St. Cloud State are very experienced clubs, you know, both of them are teams that, you know, have been to the Frozen Four more than once in the last few years. Um, so you're talking about players that have that are older, mm -hmm. a little more veteran-laden than, like, Minnesota, which is a little more uh, younger and freshman and sophomore dominated. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, okay. so no, there, just... there is, And sometimes in those, in those, in those tough games, that's, that seems to be something that you see where – teams that might be a little more senior laden a little more experienced you know like if you look at st cloud state there and both minnesota state there's a lot of like fifth year seniors out there so you're mm -hmm. talking guys like that are 24 and mm -hmm. they're going against kids that are 19 20 yeah yep, you know I, you know it's like boys versus men in a certain extent mm -hmm. when you get to those crunch times so if there is anything that i i guess i i have a little bit of hesitation is maybe Minnesota's relative lack of experience, mm -hmm. but from a from a pure talent standpoint, you have to feel pretty good about what the Gophers bring to the table because there there's not a lot of weaknesses there. But you know, if there is one, it might be just a lack of experience of some of their guys. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think it's kind of like uh, I I see this team as more ready to go. <clears throat> per se than uh, mm -hmm. another super talented team that ran into a veteran, more veteran, more hungry team in Union when mm -hmm. we went to our last championship game. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I just, yeah, I, I, I can see this team as as uh, just, just a stronger overall team than that one by a wide margin. But, yeah, I mean, that, there is that Union factor. I always think about that for forever mm -hmm. because of what – what an eye opener that was! Like an experienced, hungry team that just kind of—it was just their year, whether we liked it or not. Well, uh, I mean, that's that's, hmm. but that's you know whether you're talking about the the final four or the frozen four. Yeah, yeah. It's it, it's one and done. Yes. And, and if a team mistake, can somehow, yeah. you know, if a team can keep it, you know, if you know they're not as a lot of teams aren't going to be able to match the talent or the skill level. Well, if they could muck it up and make it a grueling, low-scoring affair and turn it into a one- or two-shot hockey game, I think we've seen throughout history that it turns games into almost like a coin flip, where, like, like even Canisius, who the, the Minnesota Gophers are playing, uh, the Gophers yeah. beat them this year, but it was just one to nothing. Oh, yeah, that's scary. Yeah. We... I mean, that's that, that's a one-shot hockey game, yeah. and <laughs> you, 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 can, you can bet that Canisius is going to try to do what they did the last time. Mm -hmm. Whether you know, there. and I, now mind you, I I have not looked at. I, I'm I'm guessing when they played Canisius may have been during the time that they had so many players gone playing in the World Junior Championships. But even then, you could imagine they're going to do a lot of the same things. They've probably been watching film on each other, obviously probably for the last few weeks. And you know, tonight when those teams teams play one another. Because mm -hmm. I think they play at nine o'clock tonight or eight o'clock tonight. Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's and, yeah. And, you know. So Central you know, Standard, yeah. we'll, 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 we'll find. Yeah, we'll find out pretty quickly whether the Gophers can back up. You know what on paper would say they should have a good chance. Mm -hmm. You know, because because it you know it's it's just like what we said with prospects. You know, the game isn't won on paper. Mm -mm. The game, you know, it's it's good. They're going to have to play hard because you can bet Canisius, they have nothing to lose. If they get blown up by the Gophers, people are going to be like, yeah, that should have happened. Yeah. The, yeah. Pre the, the, the pressure's on Minnesota. And, um, you know, I know there's a lot of fans that were pissed that, you know, all the Minnesota teams got thrown into one thing. Yeah. You better get over that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 
we better take care of it. Because, <laughs> because, like I said before, with uh, with teams like Minnesota State and St. Cloud State, those two teams feel like they belong in the Frozen Four as much as the Gophers do. Mm-hmm. And and with all those fifth year seniors, you don't think they're going to play their butts off? Yeah. Those <laughs> those kids came back for that reason. They came back to to have a chance to to make that chance at the Frozen Four again. And both those teams have tasted it, so they're gonna do whatever it takes. So I don't think the I don't think the Gophers should be like planning a trip to Tampa right now. Mm-hmm, they have no. to worry about whatever's in front of them, and in this case, it's the it's Canisius, yeah. and they need to play it one game at a time. Because if they're if they're thinking about the Frozen Four now, um, no. they'll be they'll, they'll, they won't be there very long. That's just my two cents on that. Yeah, it's it's scary. Like when I saw it, I was like, uh oh, <laughs> yeah, because well, both of them went to the fro- uh, the championship game even just very recently. Mm-hmm. Um, unfortunately for them, they both lost. But I don't mean to be rude about that. Um, yeah, the, this is really one and done, and we've been through it all here. We've been through it all. I mean, Holy Cross, that's the ultimate one. I I don't even think they had a winning record that year. They just kind of oh. won their little tournament. And then was it McGregor or whatever? That's just one of the names I remember hearing in the call. <sighs> I just, you or, know, th- or, that one still hurts all these years later. <laughs> or I think, wasn't it a couple years after that that we lost mm-hmm. to Air Force? I think so. And then we lost and, to and, Yale. And, yeah. Yeah. Yale's a little bit different. They're, they're yeah. in the AC. Whereas uh, Air Force and uh, oh. um, Canisius are both Atlantic schools, which are. Mm-hmm. I guess if you know if you want to call the Big Ten a Power Five conference, yeah, like they do, in, and for college, you know, that's considered a power conference, just like the WCHA was considered to be a power conference uh, when it still existed. Um, yep. You know, the Atlantic's always been well; they get one team in the tournament. That's about it. <laughs> one you know? team that wins wins it. Yeah, but wins they, their. Yep. You know, like I said, pressure's not on Canisius. Nope. It, loose, Canisius can play loose, and they can play. <laughs> They can play as desperately as they want to, mm-hmm. and beating Just, Minnesota, beating Minnesota, could be their recruiting championship. You know, look, yeah. we beat the Gophers. Do you want to be a Griffin? Come here. Yeah, I mean, just a, like just like an FCS school playing an FBS school, that game becomes their championship game, whether they make it or not. Mm-hmm. It's a cool name too. It's a cool name. Cool, you know, the the name itself is cool. The the Team name is cool, so. Mm. <laughs> but yep, this is their second tournament because they've won their conference tournament twice. Ten years ago was the last time, and this is mm. the ten-year anniversary of losing in the first round to Yale. Who, yeah, yep, they're they're a legitimate school. It's just that they were what were like the 15th seed, just like this team mm. is, and then they won the entire enchilada. They just went. They just said, okay, now, now we're ready to play, and they won the whole thing. <laughs> that mm. was pretty impressive. I've actually, I actually kind of have been a kind of a kind of a semi closet Yale fan ever since then, just because I, I was so impressed with that, and you know they're one of the oldest colleges uh, in the entire United States, so just like Harvard, so <laughs> sorry, um, but yeah, I mean we we definitely know what one and duns are in Minnesota. It's not just uh, the Casey Middle stats of the world; it's tournaments, tournament games too. <laughs> Well, there's, there's, I think there's, me. there's, there's, there's two middle stats on the, on, yeah. on the Gophers right now, and they're yep. gonna need both of them to play well. Yeah, uh, Luke, Luke and Luke John. And, yep. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, um, like I said, I, I think there's a lot of hope and expectations, but like I said, they better, they better stay focused game to game, because like I said, um, they're gonna, they're gonna find themselves that it's a different level, and, you know, Gopher teams that have won. Have realized that and acknowledged that and and played to that level, but there's been we've seen more than a few flameouts where it's like oh, I hate you know, it, <laughs> and and that's and those are the things that haunt you. Yeah, big big time. It's that's what that's what we're hoping. I mean, it's uh, it's the last thing we want to see is any flameout or just losing to Minnesota State again. I, I think yeah, they have they knocked us out two years in a row. Yeah, they beat us in the. I think what was it the the Elite Eight right yeah they beat us in the Elite Eight and then the the Frozen Four last year so mm-hmm. yeah both of them were not real good games from what I remember <laughs> I, I think the Gophers it was started kind of kind of okay and then it was like Union it was like a tsunami just like welcome oh. to the tournament goodbye you know 
<laughs> well, and the thing too is you can't let up. It, no. You know, even if you get up by a goal or two, that this is not the time to coast and say, "Well, we're saving ourselves for the for the Frozen Four. If you do that, you're not going to be there because those teams are going to play desperate, and they're gonna they're gonna throw everything they have at you because um, no one want you know it, it, it's there. Everyone realizes they're one game away from being over. Yep. And and hopefully, like I said, Bob Mochko uh, and company can can pass that along because, uh, like I said, um, it doesn't matter what your 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 co- you know your pairwise ranking is now. It that's all behind you. You got to prove it. Mm-hmm. So there yep, you go. That, yep, that's what it's all about, and that's probably a great way to to wrap things up. I got to think. Um, any final thoughts you might have on? the tournament like who's gonna win it maybe or any like final thoughts of the wild or shout outs or anything like that uh i gotta give a shout out i guess i'm i'm gonna give this and i don't know if she'll listen stick all tap. the time <laughs> yeah, <laughs> no, yeah, my, my, yeah my stick tap would go to probably my my wife there you for go producing yeah. our show um she's also picked up the mantle and i've been mm-hmm. away and doing things and mm. you know it's kind of a person that uh makes everything work and i'm really appreciative of that and the other thing i just want to say um i also think that uh i want to give a stick tap to uh really you for like a lot of your help like i said thank you um, thank you so much we wouldn't we wouldn't we wouldn't have seven shows if it hadn't been for your assistance and um i know Teresa appreciates it but really it's been really great and um i don't know can't say enough good things about uh kind of your support that way it's been it's been really good thank you yeah you're welcome and anytime too you know if you need uh, any uh, any support with not like technical or something like that um no and th- thank you so much for saying that and huge stick tack back at you as well you've 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 done a lot to help this show and uh, ideas and you know topics and you know a- approaching the show and bringing new people to the show like new guests and really really enhance the fan interaction part that's for sure so i huge stick tap back at you as well well thank you i appreciate it and mm-hmm. i'm glad to i'm glad to help it makes it more fun for everybody yeah it really does I, the hockey community is not a myth it's it's real like obviously it's not perfect but <laughs> it's it's real a lot of us veterans are, are are some good people out there so um other stuff uh that's now my mind blanks. I just love when that happens. But uh, obviously, M and W prospects really proud to uh, be a part of that. Even though I haven't really said much uh, or haven't really posted much in a long time, but still, you know, I'm always happy to share. And they, 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 you know, obviously, uh, Pavel Benet actually made the logo, the new logo for Brave the Wild, which has gotten some very, very positive feedback, including from the Hockey Podcast Network. Um, what was it, Doug? Dylan said that's really nice. So. It was like it was like no no improvements needed. Like Purple Mafia needed a facelift. Uh, the video game flashback logo needs a facelift. If anybody's interested in any ideas there, <laughs> that's a little a nudge nudge to anybody um, because that logo is what 16 years old, I think almost. So <laughs> um, other stuff 15. Pardon me. Uh, no, it is 16. Okay, sorry. Um, other things, obviously Minnesota Wild Global. Really appreciate that Minnesota Wild. Uh, Nation, Patrick Turner there, Minnesota Wild Global, Scott Cavendish got that thing going. Obviously, some great people there. Um, thank you always. Um, I don't think I heard from Jay Bushy this week, uh, so that's a bummer. I missed you. Uh, he's, he'd been a staple. Maybe he did, but he maybe he hashtagged to both of us or something. Could be, but it's not showing. Um, oh, I so, was gonna I was gonna throw one other thing out. But since yeah, bring up Jay Bushy. Yeah. Jay Bushy's uh, nephew, uh, Brendan Bushy, is playing for St. Cloud State. He's a senior this year. He's on so, St. Cloud State. Yeah. Yep. Oh wow! Cool. Yep. Cool. He's, uh, yeah. I think he's a. I th- I'm pretty sure he's a senior. Oh, that's so, nice. Yep. Nice. So he he'll hmm. he'll definitely be. I I would be shocked if Brenda or if Jay's not at the games because Jay lives closer to Fargo or or yeah he lives he lives closer to he'll probably be at the games of my guess. Mm-hmm. Cheering on cheering on his nephew. Oh, uh, um, um, what's his name again? Is it Brendan Bushy? Brendan. That's, oh, there he is. 
Yep. He's State a Cloud son. State. Oh, okay, cool. Yep. Um, he's originally from Fever Falls. Yep. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yep. I just pulled him up on Hockey Database. Obviously, stick top to them. Obviously, great, yeah. great, great people there. And what an what an unbelievable website. You can look up people that played a hundred years ago. So you know, uh-huh. <laughs> so it's really cool. And you know, maybe my name's in. No, it's not. It's not. <laughs> I, I just, I'm just teasing. Uh, it's just about that that deep though. Um, other than that. I think, yeah, I mean, just want to hear a huge thank you to everybody that listens. Please do uh, write a positive rating on Apple Podcasts or any other a- app. It, it, it always helps the show. And put a positive rating for uh, Reason Assist Podcast as well. Um, we have our fun hashtag deal where it's Brave the Wildest, hashtag BGWMN. And then um, for Derek, it's hashtag Crease Podcast, right? Yep. 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 So, th- yeah, see, see, that way we can make everything all kind of in one column. That way it's not all over the place, and it's, and it's easier to do fan interaction or get to your comments and such. And if I ever miss anybody's comment, I'm deeply sorry and definitely not my intent. Um, let me know uh, if that ever happens, because it's possible, uh, and I feel terrible if that happens. So, um, And I'd be more than happy to go back to it and read it on the next show. Other than that, I think that should be a wrap. Uh, hopefully the Wild can continue strong play. Uh Shoot, I want to look real quick because I know our schedule. I'll just bring up the team names super fast just for the heck of it. Uh, Philadelphia, yeah, Philadelphia, Chicago, Seattle, and Colorado. Uh, Philadelphia's on the road. Chicago's at home. Seattle's at home. Colorado is on the road. Hmm, hopefully that we can go three and one or so, something along those lines. We'll, we'll see how things go. But mm, I, I tend to babble too much when I do previews anyway, so that's probably a good thing that it wasn't on this show. <laughs> um, other than that, I can't thank you enough, Derek, for joining this show. And uh, Thanks for yeah, having me. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And incredible information as well, especially with the prospects, but with, with the whole Minnesota Wild in general. Hmm. Well, I appreciate it. And, uh, again, um, by the way, we're recording on Sunday, so oh, if anybody good. has yeah. any questions... Mm-hmm. Uh, and you want me and Kalisha to talk about it, uh, you can send that in before Sunday, and hopefully we can work it into our show. Otherwise, I hope everyone has a terrific weekend. Mm-hmm. Uh, enjoy college hockey, too. Um, should be a great tournament regardless. Whoever you're rooting for, whether it's the Gophers, the Huskies, yes. the Griffins, <laughs> the Gr- doesn't, Michigan Tech Huskies, I don't Quinnipiac. care. Quinnipiac. Quinnipiac. Yeah, the, the, the Bobcats, baby. <laughs> yes. I like that team a little bit. I do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, I don't, hmm? yeah, I think I don't think they have Odin Tufto anymore. No, he was on their team. Mm-hmm. I think he was. I think he graduated. Yeah, he played think... for Quinnipiac last year. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I haven't heard him this year. No, but we'll yeah, see. That's an. Oh, well, that's another team that's been good so many times with no national titles, but not as long as it's not at our expense. You know. <laughs> no doubt. <laughs> yeah, I don't want that. I don't. No, don't beat us, please. But that would be an interesting final. We'll see. Um, otherwise, thank you again, and we shall definitely have Derek on again maybe in the summer or later in the spring, depending on how things go. Uh, other than that, uh, hopefully the Wild can uh, go at least 3-1 and one this upcoming week. Until next time, take care, everybody. See ya.